You're very welcome. And uh, thank you very much for joining us on what we're delighted to say is a broadcast from Ireland. And as we say over these parts, Cade Mila Falcha, which means 100,000 welcomes in Irish. We have probably 30 to 40 minutes to share with you. And we've got a great story. And we really want to share our spirit and our adventure to perhaps inspire you to, to have maybe a, a call to action for you to consider working in Ireland as GP colleagues. And I really mean that word colleague because you will be treated as colleagues. I have a great pleasure today to, to introduce my friends. I've got um, James and Nicole Essie. I've known James since 2007. And Nicole, yourself and your children, the family's been here in Ireland now for 13 or 14 months. And we'll come back and we'll, we'll speak about your adventure more in a, in a few minutes. And of course, my right hand, Michelle, who we've been colleagues now for 15, 16 years. Yeah. And um, yeah, so um, we really believe in what Centric Health and Locomotion are all about. And I hope after the next 30 or 40 minutes, you'll get a, a sense of that too. Just to introduce myself, I'm Ray Power and I'm a GP. I work in a semi-rural practice 30 kilometres from Dublin and I really enjoy it. My, my own career has been interesting and, and, and no different to yourselves. I, I ventured forth and I, I worked in Australia for six and a half years and I too managed to persuade my, my, my wife to, to come on that journey with me and indeed our first child was was born over in Australia. So I, I, I know those life decisions that you're you're facing up to. And I, I know it's never easy and um, there are always checks and balances that you that you need to adopt. I, I am um, very proud to be the founder of Locomotion, co-founder of Centric Health. And we have we've got a, a, a great story to to share with you. And um we we really feel that there's an opportunity for each of you to experience working here in Ireland. What we're, we're going to do is to explain to you a little bit about the context. I'll start with a little bit of geography. And then we actually have got two short videos from colleagues who are South African doctors working here in Ireland who, who have done just what we're hoping to inspire you to do. And hopefully that will give you a context with we'll a, a nice conversation together about what the journey has been like. And then perhaps we can do a, a summation at the end of that. To start with the geography. So we have got four provinces in Ireland. We are like five to 600 kilometers, four to 500 kilometers. So it's like a tenth the size of South Africa. About, about the size of the Kruger National Park. But the past, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, five million people and um, one thing we were saying earlier as we were having a coffee is that we, we, we truly do share a similar culture. We, we, we love our sport just as, as much as you guys. And uh, we do love uh, this phenomenon in Ireland called the crack, where we uh, don't take ourselves too seriously. And we, we, we do what we need to do, but we're, we're very family orientated as well. And, 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 and we, we cherish that. Ireland is a great country. It's a, it's a liberal, open democracy. And you know what? We are so lucky with Ryanair. We have got Europe on our doorstep. And within an hour or two, you can pretty much fly anywhere in Europe and, um, and experience that, that breadth of culture and diversity throughout Europe. We have um, a safe country. We have a progressive country. We have a, a very multicultural country. And... I have to say I'm really proud with the progress Ireland is making as really a stalwart within the European Union at this stage. And um, we're very lucky also, I guess, to have that um, special relationship with the US and indeed with our friends next door in the UK. And they made their own choices, but um, we still have a very close relationship with the UK here in Ireland. 5 million people or so. And um, I do think we punch up overweight. There are 80 million people around the world who say that they're Irish. So I think that that, that speaks volumes. 
A little bit about locomotion and centric health. Locomotion started now 23 years ago. And the, the, the real sweet spot for locomotion has always been our ability to attract South African colleagues to come and work in Ireland. Without exaggerating, we've probably had 1,800 to 2,000 South African doctors who've made that journey over the last 20 plus years. And we have great opportunities for you to do the same. I have to stipulate in bold capitals, and it's nothing to do with us, but the opportunity is only for those of you who graduated from a South African medical school since August 2006. That is the Medical Council diktat, and I'm really apologetic to any of you who don't fulfill that criterion. It is not negotiable, and, and, and I apologize for that. Within Centric now, we have got 75 GP practices throughout the country. We've got 300 GP colleagues and 180 nursing colleagues and about 550 administrative colleagues throughout our practices. James is working in our practice in Newbridge Family Practice in County Kildare, which is 45 minutes from Dublin. And it is a great example, a teaching practice with GP registrars. And James is participating in the ICGP non-EU GP training scheme. And we'll come back to, to speak about that a little bit later. What is Irish general practice? Well, we have about three and a half, four thousand GPs, maybe one GP to 1800 population. We have a really good health system in Ireland for those who are really sick. Like in many places for elective access to outpatients, it can be that there's a delay. But if you're sick, and that indeed applies to, God forbid, any of us who have an illness or an acute presentation, we're really well looked after in the Irish health system. And as well as that, we also have um, now 50% of our population who, like the NHS, get free health care, which is called the General Medical Services, the GMS. And that's recently been extended to include under eights as, as well as every patient who is over, so, over 70. South African doctors do real well in Ireland. Your training is really similar to our training. And we do find that you fit in very well. Our patients get you and you get our patients. And there's a really good um, kind of synergy there between South African GPs and Irish patients. A day in the life of an Irish GP, I think it's fair. I see 14 or 15 patients a session. A session is half a day. So I see about 30 patients a day. I've got the paperwork. I've got the blood results. I've got the referrals. And I've got the other stuff that happens in every practice. But it's a fair day's work. It isn't that we're expected to see a patient every seven, eight minutes. We do have time. And we can develop those relationships so that it's not a transaction. And I think that that's why we all have chosen to be GPs in the first place. It is a very fulfilling career. And I think James will, will speak to that himself. What I'd like to do now straight away is to go to our first video. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Irene LaRue. And Irene, she will describe herself, is a GP partner in our practice in Carlo. So over to you, Irene. My name is Irene LaRue. I qualified from the University of Pretoria in 2003 and I've been working for Centric Health five years. When I came originally, I did not know a whole lot of Ireland, but I found a very friendly country, culturally very similar to South Africa in certain ways, and it's a lovely place to live in. When I finished the GP training, I looked at various options. In the end, what suited me was having that non-clinical partner, which is Centric Health, that will take on a lot of the administrative issues, which made it freed me up to focus more on the medical issues in the practice. It meant for me there's a better work-life balance. I get my annual leave if I need to. There's backup if required for administrative reasons. So Centric Health supports you in every aspect of running a practice. When I joined Centric Health, there was a very clear pathway with regards to work progression to partnership. I am now a partner with Centric and I've been about two years and 
delighted with it. There is also a new scheme that has been brought in in conjunction between the government, the health service executive and the ICGP, which is the college for GPs in Ireland. And this enables South African doctors to be able to progress in their careers if they so want it. So this is a big change from what it was before and it is a huge opportunity for South African doctors. When the South African doctors arrive, they are typically placed in practices with existing GPs who would have worked here for years, who are Irish trained, and then there's a lot of support from them as well. For anybody considering moving out of South Africa, I think Ireland is a fantastic place to consider. When I originally came, I wasn't sure whether I would stay. I quickly fell in love with the country. It is a great place to raise your kids. There's fantastic quality of life. Work-wise, it's fulfilling. There's much better work-life balance. Financially, you're well supported and you can have a fantastic life living here. Thanks very much, Irene. I can't, like, she already has an Irish accent. I mean, this is, talk about us getting under her skin and uh, her kids are playing hurling and camogie in school and um, she's living in a, in a rural area between Carlo and Kilkenny and it's our privilege for Irene to be our, our partner in the practice and indeed James it won't be long before you'll be our partner in, in Newbridge family practice as well and it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Nicole and, and James to um, our broadcast and maybe you just like to tell us a little bit about who you are and why you chose to come and, and, and live and work in Ireland? Well, we two typical South Africans uh, from Johannesburg, born and bred. Um, at the time that, that, that I registered with the Irish Medical Council, it was the big thing to do. Um, we had just finished, we'd qualified in 2001, and um, everyone was registering with either the Medical Council in Ireland or the General Medical Council in, in the UK. Ireland was just was the obvious choice. Uh, English, first language, everyone speaks English, and of course you've got to be able to communicate with your patients, which is important. The registration was straightforward. It was easy. Um, I, I went through locomotion, um, and they genuinely made it easy. And that's not me trying to sell it. It, it was an easy process. Just had to get all your documents in, in order, and once you sent it through the medical council, it's, it's fairly straightforward to register with them. Um, if you've worked as a GP in Ireland and especially in private practice, the way in which the practice runs, the way in which you treat your patients, the kind of patients that you're seeing, you could literally lift yourself up and come to Ireland. It's exactly the same. The, the Irish are great people. Ray said they don't take themselves seriously. That's absolutely welcoming, wonderful people. But the medicine is the same. Your drugs are the same. Um, augmented in South Africa is augmented in Ireland. Uh, macrodantin in South Africa is macrodantin in Ireland. You could take the MIMS in South Africa and you can literally bring it to Ireland. It's the same thing. It's the same process. It is exactly, it, it, I wouldn't say exactly the same, but it is the same. You're going to have no issues working in Ireland. And, and, and is, a, is a fair day's work a fair day's work in Ireland? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you take your, your working hours in South Africa, you, you hear 30 patients a day and you, you immediately pull back. We were seeing 30, 40 patients a day in South Africa anyway. And it's the same thing. You, you start work at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning in South Africa. You're working until 6 o'clock in the evenings. And you've got some appointments that are 5 minutes, some appointments that are 30 minutes, depending on what you see. It's the same in Ireland. It's not different. You're going to have your diary full. There might be one or two squeeze-ins. It is no different. It's the same as working in South Africa. And we might come back and talk a bit about the detail of referral and that. But Nicole, can I introduce yourself? And like, you're so welcome. And, and it's such a big journey for you to to bring your, your daughter and your son with you. And I remember meeting you in Blessington before you had made the big move. And you were apprehensive and you were nervous and, and you were really putting yourself out of your comfort zone. Can you tell us your motivation, first of all, and then I suppose you could maybe tell us how it has been since you've come and lived in Ireland. And living is what it's all about. Very much so. Um, it was a big move. We left uh, all our family and all our friends behind. Um, but we came because we wanted to give 
our children a future. Um, we wanted to give them a better lifestyle. Um, not that we lacked, not that we had a bad life in South Africa. We were part of a very fortunate um, community in South Africa and our kids went to private school and we lived in a good um, estate. So we were very comfortable, um, but there was just no, no freedom for my children. And um, since we've been here, I've seen my children grow in leaps and bounds. Um, the amount of freedom and independence that they've gained just from being here. It's been what tough. About 13 and... 13 and 11. 11 now, yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, so my daughter started secondary school, which was, which was great because it was first year and it was different kids. They, it was easier for her to make friends because it was... Everyone was coming from different schools, starting first year yeah, together. Yeah, they're all amalgamating at exactly. the same time. Yeah. Whereas it was a little bit harder, I think, for Josh because he went to went into fourth class, and obviously no, you can't get him in from the park up here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> exactly. Now that he's made his mates, yeah. you know, he's he's out every every afternoon at the park with his friends, and you know, it's just lovely to see him have that independence. You know, in the afternoons when he walks home from school. You know, I see, I usually wait for him halfway and then I see all the school kids walking down the street and he comes down with his friends and it's such a, it gives me such a sense of happiness to see him have that freedom to be able to do that, to walk with his friends and they stop in at the shop and they buy them buy themselves a lollipop and, you know, and they, he's doing it without me. You know, he, he's, he's not afraid to, to go somewhere without me and to do something without me, whereas before... I, you know, I, I would never let them out of my sight. In fact, I wouldn't let them, I wouldn't take them to the shopping center unless I had someone with me, one to watch my daughter and I'd watch my son, you know. It, we, we had to make sure that we had eyes on, on both kids. Now, the school, I'm allowed to say this because my wife is a, a national school teacher, but isn't the schooling system in Ireland excellent? And it, it's we, been great. We, we pay our tax, but it does deliver. It, you know, right, I, I, was, I, was, I was very upset the other day because I had to pay 100 euros for the year for 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 for, for the miscellaneous for miscellaneous things, yeah, yeah. absolutely now the schooling system in ireland is spectacular um it, it it's it's a great system the kids are thriving they're doing well they're covering all the subjects and it yeah they, they're doing i actually enjoy uh, the content um, of the subjects they're covering yeah. The, 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 the history and geography. The, the history, the geography. It, it's absolutely. so interesting. It's very um, interesting. And yeah. they can see the history they're learning. You know, like if you if, if they do Roman history, we can travel in, you know, they can see the Colosseum and, you know, they can actually physically see what they are learning about in textbooks. Yeah. And that's fabulous. I, like, we're all mature, so I, I would really like us to be very transparent about the challenges that we encounter on such a big move and and, and and it ain't a walk in the park if you are a bed or rose or whatever cliche we, we, we would like to adopt. And what, what have been the major challenges? And could you just reference like the cost of living and, and, and how much it's, you know, and we're actually going to help more with relocation expenses, which um, we can give detail about, which uh, is important because trying to get the rand into euro costs you a lot of rand. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's 18, 19, 19 at the moment. Much. It's, it's yeah. 20, 20, 48 to the euro at the moment, um, which is which is a lot. Yeah. Look, it, it's not a bit of roses. You're absolutely right. It's a big decision to make. Um, you were asking earlier, why Ireland? Um, for me, it's it, it's easy to work, and that's important. As 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 the primary breadwinner in our family, coming to Ireland, I can work and I can work openly as a GP, and I can earn a good salary. Um, the other important thing is on the, I don't know if we're going to deal with this, but on the critical skills visa, Nicole can work on my visa, which makes a massive difference. Now, Nicole, if she wants to work, she can work. Um, we, yeah, we, absolutely. Left, we left Very South Africa so. for various reasons, crime being one of them. And I mean, you know, we're being honest here. So for us, it was a big factor. The freedom was another factor and the opportunity for our children and, and, and also to give them exposure to a different Different culture. Where will you get the stamp for an uh, Irish citizenship? How long does that? Two years. Yeah. So two years for the stamp for. Years, so on your critical skills visa, you come across. Um, I had nothing to do with that. I just had to send paperwork across. Centric did all of that for me. And um, it was it was easy. Uh, again, I just sat back and waited for the emails and Centric organized that. Um, 
So for two years, you're on the critical skills visa. You are working uh, within that visa. Four months before your critical skills visa is up, you can start the application process for your STEM4. Once you've got your STEM4, you've got residency. Residency now entitles you to stay in the country and, and then work freely. Um, that's for two years. Then you renew your stamp for, and after five years, you can start the process for citizenship, um, which is ultimately our goal, is, is citizenship at the end of the road, and citizenship for our, for our children. Um, also, for them to have tertiary education that will be recognized. And the tertiary education that, that if you're living here is is you 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 well it's it's, it's free it's free essentially. absolutely so it's essentially um, um, it's it's um it's a gift my own girls have gone through university and uh it's really highly it's a high standard and and, and it's as you say internationally recognized and not only that i mean if if we are here um they don't have to study in ireland the kids could go and study in yeah, the they UK. Can they can do an Erasmus over in Europe for yeah. a year. Absolutely. Which is, yeah. Absolutely. A lot of doors open up by being here. So, Nicole, like, how has it been around settling? You had to get a car, you had to get a house, you had to find out where Aldi and Lidl were, and you had to really get to the nuts and bolts of living. And it's was, really... was that stressful to take you one, three, six months or... How, how, how it's was very it? straightforward. No, it was. It, you know, the roads are very similar, so driving wasn't an issue. Um, the GPS is amazing. I never used GPS in South Africa, but here I haven't been lost once. Um, we've been all over the show. Of um, you know, I spent we we arrived when it was school holidays, and so I had the kids to entertain for two months, and we which was great, by the way. It was absolutely. Had, yeah, so yeah. We, we got to see yeah. a lot of places and do a lot of things. Um, we, you know, we did a lot of traveling in those two months, you know, just locally, um, but it was amazing. You know, they thoroughly enjoyed it and no, it was, it was really, the everyday living was easy to get into. But in fairness, we, we did our homework. So you're talking about the challenges. Housing can be a challenge. It can be a challenge and, um, you got to do your homework. You know, we, we arrived in Ireland, Nicole and I four months in advance, we came for two weeks and we came and met with Centric. We came and met with the practice manager. We came and looked around. Um, we made a lot of contact. There are a lot of groups out there. There's Facebook pages of South Africans living in Ireland. Make use of it. We phoned a lot of different people. We asked Centric to put us in contact with GPs that are working here, which we did. And we phoned them and we asked about how much are cell phones, how much are groceries, how much is petrol, how much is car insurance? Um, how much is uh, we share? We will share that. Thank you yeah, because you've, because you've, that's you've because that's the nuts. That template, yeah. Yes, and that's yeah. the nuts and bolts. That is coming here. Yeah, so you're coming here and you're saying, right, this is your salary. This is what you can earn. But what do I actually get out of that? And that that for us was a very big thing. I'd already locumed in Ireland for a number of years, so I knew Ireland. I knew what it was like. I knew the areas, so I knew what I was coming to. We drive on the same side of the road. Yeah. The signs are all in English. It's kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. Yeah. The cars are all right-hand drive. So it's it's literally you take yourself from South Africa and you come here. Yeah. It's very simple. Yeah, um, and it never rains here. <laughs> okay, first of all, you never stop whenever raining. you hear of, <laughs> that's, that's what that everyone bad. thinks. No, honest, honestly, <laughs> there's a higher than average rainfall in Ireland, but it does not rain all the <laughs> time. <laughs> Okay, let me put that very clear. This is the advocacy here for us, yeah. yeah. yeah no, it doesn't. It, yeah. it, True. it rains. It rains for an hour. We're in the middle of the Atlantic, you know, so it is <laughs> what it is. But it's Absolutely. not 24-7, seven days a week. Yeah, it's not downpour the whole time. It's not downpour all the time. There's some beautiful days. And the winters might be, um, you know, the, the, the days might be short in the winter, but what I found really helps is, you know, with the kids going to school and with working and that, you know, you just... Everyday life kind of goes on. So, so yes, you notice it, but it actually passes by so quickly. You know, it's not, it's not that bad. You know, I've heard people like, yeah, but the, the days are so short. It's really not bad. It goes by so quickly. The quick. days do Absolute, 24 hours. You know, and and the summers, the days are so long. It, you know, you make up for so much. With summer, you're teeing off at four o'clock in the afternoon, four up as four, 
you're getting 18 holes in. Because bother. Yeah. Not Absolutely. a problem. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, it's but also, like you were saying, Josh was in the park then with his friends yeah. until 9 o'clock at night. Until 9 in the evening, you know? you know. And you guys don't really no. have a care. You're not worried. Jay's just there with he his He takes friends. his bike. He gets on his bike. He rides and goes and picks up a friend. They go and pick up another friend. Next thing, there's five or six of them in the park. And he's happy. He's 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 got freedom. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's not... On a Bloomin' TV screen or... No, absolutely. 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. and he's out there. Michaela walks into town with her friends from school. Uh, they go and they go to like McDonald's and they sit down and they have a meal together and they walk home. It is an incredible amount of freedom for the children and, the, and independence and they're learning from it. And that that's what's amazing. Can I ask... You obviously look like you log into here since 2007, periodically on and off, and in various different forms in the out of hours, in the VHI, and in and then in daytime. Do you think that helped? So, for anybody that's actually looking now and resonate, and your story is resonating, do you think they should look them first, or would you say like lock, stock, and barrel? Or if anybody's on the, if anybody has any questions or doubts or they have an inkling that they should just contact us and kind of talk through. In my opinion, come and do a locum. Come and do a locum. Turn it into. I think coming on the atypical is a really good. Coming on the atypical, come and do a locum. You don't have to. You don't have to experience multiple parts of Irish practice. Just pick something. Uh, pick GP. That's really pick good advice. Hours, I think. Pick VHR. Pick one of them. Come here for a couple of weeks, and come and locum and get a feel. For, that is more than enough to get a feel of what it's like. You don't need to. You don't need to do multiple locums and that. Just That's do a locum very and come and feel. And and you, you'll you'll know exactly what it's like. And in that time, you can see what it's like. You know, we we did a mock shop at Tesco. Tesco is the equivalent of pick and pay in South Africa. Uh, Duns is the equivalent of Woolworths. And we did a mock shop to say, okay, well, let's go in there and let's go and actually buy groceries that we normally would buy and yeah. toiletries, and let's see what that basket costs us. And and we did that. And very quickly we realised we can do this. Yeah. Um, and we got talking to people. We got talking to South Africans at Livia. How much is electricity? How much is heating? Um, we went into a three mobile store, which is like the, the Vodacom or MTN in South Africa, and said, right, how much is a pay as you go on a monthly basis? And what do you get with that? Within a week, Nicole and I knew exactly what our cost of living was going to be. We had, we had a very good idea. And that made the path so much easier. And then talk to locomotion. I mean, I must have, I must have been an annoyance to them, emailing and phoning and and second guessing. It's I all must, about information. Absolutely. I must have asked yeah. the salary question yeah. about a hundred times. Absolutely. But yeah. I, I made and, sure and that we I was certainly well, welcomed that. Yeah. And uh, and every single time I phoned, they were happy to answer my questions. They were happy to, to talk to me, and that was great. Yeah. That's and super. And you talk about the Irish yeah. welcoming and friendly. One hundred percent. And when you're in the practice working. The patients are welcoming and they're friendly and they're happy and they're appreciative that of is true. the fact that yeah, you're here. That is, yeah. That's a fact, yeah. yeah. So we're going to hold here because we actually have another great case study to share with our colleagues in South Africa. So um, we're going to go back now to have a listen to Dale Africa's story. So over to you, Dale. My name is Dr. Dale Africa. I graduated from Stellenbosch University in 2015 and I have been working with Centric Health since 2020. What prompted me to move to Ireland was the lack of safety, the lack of resources, and my working conditions within the South African system. In terms of the day-to-day -day job, I find that in Centric more structured. You have your acutes that you need to see, you have your chronic disease management, and then you would have your admin, which you know there's an allocated time for. Whereas in South Africa, you could be doing all three at once. So definitely much more structure and much more support. When I joined Centric initially, one of the main opportunities was the opportunity of growth. Growth as a GP, as well as growth within the Irish medical system. At the moment, currently available in Ireland to South African doctors is an amazing initiative called the Non-EU GP Scheme provided by the Irish College of General Practitioners. This opportunity is really amazing because over a two-year period, it allows South African doctors to be on the same level of qualification as Irish doctors. The advantages of this kind of program, one would be that we are able to do a GMS, which is basically a public list. The second thing is also that it opens you up to be accepted as a vocational doctor, 
vocational meaning that you are now trained and accepted as an Irish qualified doctor, which opens you up to many employment opportunities as well. When you join with Centric, you get a, a critical skills visa. The critical skills visa is really ideal because that allows you two years to work within the system and to work on a contract basis. And once the contract basically expires after two years, you get a stamp four. So once you have a stamp four, you are now not required to have a visa to work in Ireland anymore. Furthermore, two years after that, you can then apply for a passport. So this is really an ideal way of getting both your stamp four and a way of getting residency. In terms of my decision to come to Ireland, it is definitely one of the decisions I don't regret at all. When I came to Ireland at the beginning, I made the decision kind of by being on the border and kind of being, should I go, should I not go? However, when I came to Ireland and I realized the kindness of the people here, but also the opportunities to grow, I knew that I'd made the right decision. If someone is on the fence about moving to Ireland from South Africa, don't be. I would say go for it. It was one of the best decisions I made. This is one of the leaps that you want to be taking in terms of your career because really, in terms of support, in terms of opportunities, this might not come by again. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Dale. And it was great that you referenced both the short-term and the medium-long-term opportunities working in Ireland. So we might go into a little bit more detail, Michelle, and um, perhaps you might be able to describe to us the opportunities. I, I love what you said earlier, James, about perhaps putting a toe in the water by coming over on an atypical work permit. What does that mean? And then what would how would you transition over to a critical skills permit, Michelle? Yeah. So, I mean, there's two options for non-EU passport holders. So there's an atypical working permission um, scheme. And there is a critical skills permit, which James alluded to. So the atypical working scheme permission allows a doctor to come over for three months at a time, so 90 consecutive days, and then you can work within Ireland. Um, so ordinarily we'll have a doctor come over and would either organize work for them for a month or for, or for the three month period, just dependent on themselves, to see whether they actually like Ireland. Some doctors then tend to come on atypicals regularly. They flit between South Africa and Ireland, earning revenue here and bringing it back to their own practice back in South Africa. So people use it as a recce, like James did previously, um, or else they use it as an ongoing pathway. So some people choose to come once a year, others actually come for nine months of the year. Once somebody has ascertained that they actually do like Ireland, they do like the, the practice, the way that we operate here, there is an option to go on to a critical skills permit. So in order to get a critical skills permit, you need a two year long contract from an employer. So what Centric Health do is we offer doctors a two year contract that allows you to get the critical skills permit. We have about a 14 day turnaround time for critical skills. Um, the time frames vary dependent on people's situations. So you'd be looking at, I'd say maybe an eight week, eight to 12 week window, even though we get it within two weeks. So you're- And you have to leave the country to get applied for the critical yeah, skills. Yeah, you cannot be in the country. You cannot yeah. be in an active atypical whilst you apply for a critical Let's skills. Let's make it real. So short term, short term, how much would a South African doctor in Euro make just approximately what are the options and, and, and where might they work out of hours regular GP and GP out of hours yeah. so in daytime practice if you're working 10 sessions a week like we said 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 you'd be earning about 3,500 euros a week per gross. week gross. Gross. gross before tax before tax yeah, yeah. Um, if you wanted if you elected to come over and just do solely out of hours you could be looking between four to 6,000 euros per week and we balance it so you don't work every night because we, you know, but yeah. you can work up to between 50 and 60 hours a week. I think in total, it's not unreasonable, James. Yeah. Look, but you know, also, if I, if I think back to the days when I used to come in locum, as most of the doctors that were coming to locum, like me, we, we came and we said, right, we are here to work. Yeah. We want to maximize the time. We want to get as much money as possible. We came, we worked for a couple of weeks and then we went back home. So, you know, it, it depends on your personality. My, my first trip here was a working holiday. So I came and I worked for three weeks. I took an additional 10 days. Nicole came to join me and we did a tour of Ireland. And, and we used that as, that was pre-kids, by the way. And we used that as an opportunity to come and work, earn euros, and then spend the money touring Ireland and coming on holiday. Up until that point, I'd never been to Ireland. Um, but then with subsequent locums, I would come and I would be here for three to four weeks and I would just... And all I wanted to do was work. I wanted to maximize the time. Uh, locomotion centric pulled me in because 
you know, you also have to look after yourself. You can't. That's the balance. It's yeah. just, there, just avoid but, burnout. But I came and I yeah, said, we I'm understand here. that too. But we will enable that to facilitate people who want to concentrate their activity more for a short burst time, which is fair enough. Precisely. Yeah. I mean, that, that also depends on you. So like, if you're going to come and you want to work for a couple of days and take a few days off, you can do that. Certainly yeah. centric that, you know, there were times that I did do that, but there are people who want to come and they want to work and they want to maximize the time. You can do that. Um, if I may just say with, like you mentioned before tax. So you do get taxed on your income, but today, if you're coming for a short period of time, the revenue website is easy. Don't be put off because if you are earning your salary, if your main... There is a double taxation treaty, yeah. Correct. There's yeah. a double taxation treaty. Yeah. So when you earn your salary, you're going to be taxed on it, but then you can log into the revenue website and you can then get your tax credits and claim it back. So that put a lot of people off a while back, but the process... That has become streamlined. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say is now with the revenue website, it's right on there. It's Excellent. easy. It's not hard to do it. Um, in the beginning, it was a bit difficult, and a lot of us got put off because of because it was muddled. But today, you would log onto Revenue website, and you can claim your tax back. So that's really good to know for the short term. And then we're looking at like Centric Health is a network of seventy five practices around the country. We actually need twenty, thirty, forty South African colleagues to join us in our practices and we will welcome you with open arms because the opportunities are there for you and you'll do really well. So if you could just give us the perspective on what it looks like, again, from the revenue point of view, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the ICGP program, if that's okay, Michelle. So from around the critical skills? Perhaps? On the critical skills. Yeah. So on the critical skills, yeah, centric, like James said, it is very easy once you if you're interested in a position, we literally ask you just for your CV. We set up an interview for you with our medical director. If they feel that you're a right fit or that you feel that we are a right fit, more importantly, then we put you forward to some practices, you know, based on your preferences, your circumstances. Thereafter, it's pretty much you receive a letter of offer, you get a contract two days later, and then you decide when do you actually want to come. And it literally is, we're guided by a doctor's availability and a doctor's preferences. We don't have control just to tell you you're just going here and, and that's it. Like at a lump it, there is so much freedom and flexibility for doctors to choose where they want to go. So once once you've signed on the dotted line for the contract, we literally organize the critical skills permit. And like James said, it's literally a tick box exercise. You furnish, I think it's max 12 documents, if, if that. And then literally within three months, you could be working in Ireland, if not shorter. Um, and from a tax perspective, you know, it, it's similar. You, you get taxed. And how much do you get paid in a centric practice for a normal week if you do 10 sessions in the week? Like 10 sessions, like five days, Monday to Friday. Yeah, so I think what we do here is it would go by annum. So it's 130,000 per annum. Euro per annum. Exactly, yeah. And in addition to that, there are paid holidays. You get six weeks annual leave. You get sick leave cover. You get a medical indemnity. Medical indemnity we is really fully covered. would encourage those colleagues from South Africa who were with NPS to to bring that with them because it's easier than to go through. If you're with NPS, yeah. it is straightforward. You literally phone up NPS as I did and you say, right, I'm with you guys. I'm moving to Ireland. I'm on 10 sessions and they will then give you a quote. They will ask a whole bunch of questions. What kind of patients you're going to be seeing, et cetera. What kind of procedures you're going to be doing. You get the quote and your NPS is going to be covered it's covered by covered Centric. entirely by Centric. Yeah. Um, as far as the 130 per mm -hmm. annum, yeah. Um, there are calculators that can be used. The calculators are extremely accurate. Um, your net salary after tax is you coming home with around about seven thousand euros in your bank account at the end of the month, and that's excluding that's excluding any additional work that you do. And we can we can offer digital doctor work, right? So so let me just there, yeah, sorry two, for two interrupt. No, James. you're 100 yeah, right. Yeah. Bro. There's two yeah. aspects to this. On your critical skills visa, you cannot work for anyone else. You have to work for your employer. Your employer is Centric Health. Now Centric Health has other avenues of revenue. So digital doctor, this is you sitting at home working on your computer doing online consulting. 
that gets paid through Centric Health. So that is not additional income from another source that is still from your employer, which adds a huge amount to your salary. So you can earn additional money, come out with more money by doing very little extra work. And you can dictate the hours that you want to do. So there is room to earn more. It's not just your nine to six, Monday to Friday. Um, there are out of hours services. Yes, and we we work in KDOC, and that we we can do shifts there, which is the GP co-op. So as long as it's yeah, affiliated yeah. with the practice, First, again, and you know. and if you just make those wishes known, Centric can 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 do that for you, and then they put it into your critical skills visa, and you've got the ability to earn a fair. Well, I, I don't want to probably but depending on how much work you want to do 50 to 90 percent more income depending on the amount of work that you want to do let me just make that clear i understand your caveat yeah 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 the caveat is there but there is more that you can earn but on your base salary from what i've seen with the deductions you're coming out with around seven thousand euros a month is that more or less right yes great now that again from a south african perspective be careful you don't want to go and say 7,000 equals 140,000 rand. Um, you, you look or look at your cost of living. But for us, on a single salary, we are living very happy. Very happily, very comfortably. Um, we don't want for anything. And your cost of living is really up to you. Up to you. But yeah. you yeah. learn, you're earning a good salary and you're living a good life. life. Yeah. That's very Sorry, helpful. Just, yeah, yeah. Um, I know we're morphing into other things, but yeah, yeah. Um, I, we'll come back to the lifestyle piece just as we're wrapping. But might I just reference the ICGP non-EU GP training program, which is in place from the beginning of 2023, and it's really exciting. James is enrolled, Dale is enrolled, and what it means is that we are able to supervise you in our practice. It has to be outside of one of the provincial cities. So Dublin, Cork, Galway, Waterford and Limerick are not included in the scheme. But outside of that, like Newbridge, Blessington are 40 minutes from the city centre, but they're, they're included. And you will then enrol in a programme which is very, very good from an academic point of view. It's a very well run. You are facilitated and supported with our network to then sit the MICGP exam within that two-year framework and graduate with the MICGP, which means that you then become a specialist GP in Ireland, which means that you're able to take on a public panel, a GMS contract with RHSC, the equivalent of the NHS, which really embeds you in the system. It means that you are a partner in your practice. You are the leader of your network of patients in that practice. And as well, come back to the financial point of view, what's really meaningful with the GMS contract is that there's a very substantial pension that comes with the, it's a very generous pension indeed. So that if you have a panel of say a thousand patients you would get a contribution from the HSC to your pension of approximately €30,000 per annum, which is tax-free going into your pension. Which, oh, wow. you know, for us real young fellas, it's not a big deal. <laughs> but then it's as a big facetious, but it's really good to invest in the future. And it's something which we don't really take account of with our budgeting is the value of absolutely. a pension as, as we, we put hidden, that. It's a hidden benefit. Yes, very much and, so. And, and with the extension of the GMS scheme in Ireland now, even recently, we need more doctors to take on those GMS contracts. So the ICGP is broadening the parameters of the training program. So for those of you, once you come, it it can be that you come under critical skills. I'm I'm hearing James about putting your toe in your water initially, then coming, but. Some people choose to come lock, stock and barrel. That's okay too. And then when you're embedded in your practice, we will support you to apply for that program. And then after that two year period, you will be a GP specialist in Ireland, which is wonderful. And 
James, you alluded to something earlier, which is that in South Africa, if you go back to do the, the master's in family medicine for two years, you actually, your salary is cut, well, which won't happen here. 20 years ago, there was a two-year diploma, which was a master's in family medicine, which gave you a postgraduate qualification in GP practice. That fell away. That was no longer available. So you could work as a GP in your practice, private practice, and get a postgraduate qualification. That fell away completely about 20 years ago. In order to get a postgraduate qualification, you need to give up private practice and work full-time as a registrar in family medicine, which is, a, which is for four years, if you can get a post. Now, to work, to get a postgraduate qualification in this country, you again need to be a registrar for four, four years. years in That's, a training yeah. scheme. That's right. This is the equivalent of that master's in family medicine that was existing um, 20 years ago, where for two years, you're working full-time. You're still working away. You're still working. You're earning a salary. You, your, your quality of life has not changed. Yeah. Your a salary has not changed, but you're going to get a postgraduate qualification. And that is the important thing. I, I, if you are young and qualified in South Africa, you would be crazy not to take this up. It, it's, it's from a career perspective, you have to look at it. It opens up the world for you. Whereas right now, sorry, you, right now you qualify as a, as a GP in South Africa, you do your internship, you do your community service, and you're a GP. Pretty much the only place you can work freely as a GP is in South Africa. You can come to Ireland and work as a GP. You don't have to be part of the ICGP program. I mean, you do not have to. And you can come and work here and do very well. But if you're looking at career advancement, getting that postgraduate qualification, this is a no-brainer. It, it is a no-brainer. Just on that, I mean, did you find you were supported by your practice in going for that? And have you found the support, have you found it overwhelming or do the practice understand to balance it so that you have time for that? It's streamlined. It's, yeah. uh, and they cover the cost as well that you don't actually yes. have to invest in that course. No. No. So yeah. No. Course they, they, fees are paid for by the practice. Course yeah. fees are yeah. paid for by the yeah. practice, yeah. and you're just carrying on as normal. Yeah. Um, but it's a win-win because Very right. much we, so. within Century, we have a, a, a we're a learning organisation. We've got very strong academic links with UCD and RCSI, and this is who and what we are. And our fourth value is courage to fulfil our potential. So we really want to support enthuse you to participate yeah. in the program and and thankfully with you James we're pushing an open door and it's been great I, I work for Centric um, I'm doing this interview with Centric and certainly it can be construed that I'm I'm trying to sell this coming to Ireland with Centric has been easy it's simple it's easy I, I fire across emails I get responses back Centric want me here Ireland wants me here I am being made to feel welcome. Um, I've got questions. The questions have been answered. I'm being welcomed into a practice. It's the culture is one of a, of, of welcoming. You, you, you said it. You 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 Kate Miller Falcher. a thousand welcomes. Mm. Yeah. That has been my experience in Ireland. Mm. It has been for, for the last sixteen years that I've been coming to Ireland. It is welcome. How can we help you? We want you here. What work do you want? Yeah, thank you, I, James. I, I mean. That, that, right. that kind of we are um, that kind of really touches our own passion because it it is actually who we are absolutely and and, and, and it's it ain't fake no you know, it's not fake yeah. at all the Irish yeah. are welcoming mm. people Centric is a welcoming organisation whatever questions I had they were answered whatever whatever I was unhappy with Centric came back and said right how can we help you how can we make this easier for you and that has been my journey and certainly the journey of doctors that I've spoken to. Um, so it is great and it is welcoming and it, and it's a, it's a great opportunity. And this, this ICGP, so I arrived before this program came about. And the moment I found out about the program, I, I, I went to Ray and I said, Ray, first come off to round James. <laughs> I was, I yeah. was adamant that I wanted in and, and you guys helped, made it happen. So at the end of the day, it is, if you're looking for an easy path into Ireland, Centric are there to help you. An island is not difficult. It is not easy to, it's not difficult to come here. Easy to come here. Well, thank you. And um, what we do then, just as the call to action, is to, um, we got to talk about rugby, of course. So um, Ireland have played South Africa 26 times. <laughs> we have 
won eight out of 26, but it's not for the want of endeavor. Anyway, um, our call to action is that we would love you to reach out to us. And the next steps are for you to send us your CV with your references. We then will line up a video call with our medical director, Paddy Halligan, and um, invariably with those of you who are minimum of four years postgraduate and who have graduated from a South African medical school since August 2006, invariably it will be that we will be encouraging you to, to come. You have the two choices, the atypical choice to come over and put your toe in the water as it were for four to eight weeks or up to three months if you wish. Or else if it suits your family more to come straight away on the critical skills, that's also a, 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 an option that's there for you. Ireland wants you, Ireland needs you. So um, thank you very much. I have to say a huge thank you, Nicole and James, for giving up your own holidays this week and really appreciate you giving up your time. And Michelle, as always, and um, Michelle will be available to any one of you with any of your queries, as will I indeed. And yeah, please I'll share my out. details. And you have, you can, have can our just contact say, details there. Can I just say that, that you need to bron you need to, to reach out. There's a huge South African contingent in Ireland. There's not one single South African that I've come across who's not willing to give information or to help. If you have questions about how to bring your animals across, what con you know, how long did it take a container to get here, uh, cost of living, um, anything like that, reach out. The South Africans here want to help. They want to impart their experience and their knowledge. And if you don't... Always we happy to light up the braai. <laughs> Absolutely, there we go. Brian and Priest. Absolutely, <laughs> well barbecue. done, Brian. Yes, <laughs> and we we do Brian. Just for information's sake, I've probably had about ten Brian's in the last month. Yeah. So there is an opportunity to Brian. But the point is, reach out, ask the questions, um, get your mind settled. We we all want to help, yeah. and we're a community, and and uh, and that's important is to make use of the information that's there. And think, like you said. Any doctor within our network or even outside of us is more than happy to pick up the phone and talk to somebody that has I've yet to come across just anyone who does any doubts. Yeah. Yeah. And these are, they are Facebook pages. There's a South African Facebook page, not just doctors, but other South Africans living here. There's a South African uh, golf society. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that the in, South African in, food shops. South African That's food shops. You can yeah. get Burrowors, by yeah, the way. There you go. Lidl sells Burrowors. That's you can get yeah. And you can get Bolton. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you yeah. can get a staple things. in the supermarkets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've, uh, I hope, been enthusiastic to inspire your choice. Um, this we are labeling as Project Emerald Isle. So um, we welcome you with open arms and please make contact with us. And we really look forward to hosting you when you arrive in Ireland. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Nicole, James, and thank Michelle. You. Thank, thank you. Thanks loads for coming.